Hey everybody, it's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab. In this video, I'm going to tell you about brute force attacks. What they are, what hackers target, and how you can protect yourself. So I'm not going to show you any code or anything on a website. I'm just going to go through some slides so you gain a better understanding of what the attack is and how you can protect yourself from them. So the first thing to know is what is a brute force attack specifically? And specifically, a hacker tries to gain access to your website by guessing a correct username and password combination. Now it might sound like they're sitting there manually typing in a keyboard trying to guess it, but what they actually have is automated software that does the trial and error for them. And they can try thousands or millions of password combinations in a day. They don't usually do it on one website. They have a whole list of websites programmed into the software and the software just goes out and hammers all of them and just tries combination after combination after combination to see if it can get the right one. And it uses statistics. Obviously, there's a lot of people that use the same password. The most commonly used password in 2014 was 123456. So obviously that would be a password that they try very early on in the software. A lot of WordPress users have a user account called admin, and that's going to be programmed in the software. So they find all these things that, that commonly occur. And if somebody has the username admin and the password 123456, they're hooped. They're going to get hacked. It's only a matter of time before they get brute forced. When someone is brute forcing your website, there are typically two targets that they target. The first is the wp-login.php file or the login page itself. And the second is, this is much less known, the second is the XML rpc.php file. Now that file is used for remote posting via email. It's a legitimate WordPress file that is rarely used by webmasters. Most webmasters don't even know it exists. And like I said, it's used for remote posting via email. And that file can actually be tapped into by software and hackers to try to brute force your website. So that brings us to how do you protect your website? Well, the first way is to password protect the login page via HT access files. So before anybody can access the login page, they have to first enter a username and password, and then they can go to the login page, and then they have to enter another username and password to actually log into the site. So it doubles your protection. And of course, you don't want to use the same username and password for both. You want to make sure they're both strong usernames and strong passwords. The second thing you can do is change the login page URL from its default. So the default is when you're not logged in, you can go to wp-login.php and that loads the login page, or you can go to wp-admin and that will load the login page. But there's a plugin you can use, there's actually a couple of plugins that you can use, or just straight up via HT access if you're good at Apache commands, where you can change that URL. So you could have your URL be forward slash toy trucks. And then that your website forward slash toy trucks, that becomes your login page. Now that's not going to be programmed into any hacker software to automatically search for that page. So chances are it's going to be very hidden for a long time unless a search engine picks it up and a hacker does some research on your site to try to find a login page, which is pretty rare. But for the most part, it would be hidden if you change the URL. What you can also do is have something installed that will lock out the IPs of anybody trying to log into your site multiple times with an incorrect username and password. Common examples are the Limit Login Attempts plugin or the WordFence plugin. They both have that functionality where you can set how many times someone can try usernames and passwords before they're locked out. Next, what you can do is disable the xmlrpc.php file via HT access. Like I said earlier, that file is rarely used. Most people don't even know it exists. So if you don't use that file, and you know because if, if you're not posting via sending an email to your website, then you're not using that file. So then you can disable it via HD access and that's no longer an attack vector on your website. And that increases the protection on your site from brute force login attempts. So beyond that, the brute force attack is one way hackers get into your site, but there's plenty others. And there's one that's a really, really big issue right now. And you will supremely benefit from knowing the, this common attack vector and how hackers get in. I've got a free tutorial on my website. I encourage you to go and check it out. All you have to do is enter your name and email 
and you get instant access to the free tutorial. And you can click on the link below this video or click on the annotation right below the big red arrow to get to that page where you can access that tutorial. And if you do this one thing consistently and do it all the time and do it really well, you are protecting yourself from the vast majority of hack attempts and you're really doing a lot towards your security. And it's something that's really simple and very, very few people actually do it right and do it consistently. And so they leave their website open to attack. So make sure you click on the link below right now to go and check out that tutorial video. I'll see you there.